आर रिव्यूइंग स्कॉडा कुशाक 1.0 पॉइंट जीरो मॉन्टे कार्लो विद द होंडा एलिवेट वन पॉइंट फाइव लीटर नेचुरली एस्परेटेड जेड एक्स वेरियंट एंड दिस इज द मॉन्टे कार्लो वेरियंट लेट स्टार्ट विद द हेडलाइट्स इट गेट्स एल ई डी प्रोजेक्टर सेटअप विद एल ई डी डी आर एल्स एंड हेलोजन इंडिकेटर दे इज द फॉग लाइट एंड द फॉग लाइट प्लेसमेंट शुड बी हेयर बट इट्स राइट डेयर लेट्स ओपन द इंजन वे स्ट्रेट अवे and this is powered by a 1 liter motor which is 1 liter TSI motor and it's making quite a sound because it's three cylinder a lot of space to occupy a bigger engine which the Skoda Kusha gets and it's a 1.5 liter motor no insulation right there which is part of a cost cutting whereas we talk about the elevate Yeah the bonnet feels heavy on a Honda yeah there's insulation right here and this is the Honda's 1.5 liter iVTEC 15 year old motor and yeah they haven't given any turbo or any diesel of course and there's again lot more space to accommodate a bigger engine now both of these cars has po have polarizing dimensions and uh, the honda elevates dimension is about 4312 mm in length whereas the skoda kushak in length is about 4225 mm the height of the skoda kushak is again less which is 1612 mm whereas the height of honda elevate is 1650 mm the width of the skoda kushak is 1760 which is on par or similar with the honda elevates 1790 width and the wheel base of the both of these cars is approximately same which is which is 2651 for the Skoda Kushak and 2650 for the Honda Elevate now there's a major difference in the ground clearance of both of these vehicles the ground clearance of Honda Elevate is about 220 mm whereas the skoda kushak gets a ground clearance of only 188 mm they are pseudo suvs of course but honda elevate elevate is outplaying in every dimension uh, with the skoda kushak so yeah it's lengthier it's wider and the height is tall so it's taller and the ground clearance is better as well here the tire size uh, is also bigger here the it's get it gets 215 the it's wider whereas it gets 2s on 205s and this cladding on both the cars under body cladding uh wheel arch cladding right here too so insulation in terms of insulation uh both of these cars get good results the skoda has a monte carlo badge which looks very aggressive whereas the elevate has a simple elevate badge so that you don't forget which car you're in and both of these cars are promoting their brand value as they have a good good brand value the design language is quite skodaish and uh, the grill looks similar to the octavia's grill here's the skoda logo and uh, that's the grill covered in black chrome led setup here again and there's the radiator and sort of a skid plate treatment given right here similarly honda elevate gets full led setup even the indicators are led which is a good touch and here's a chrome strip running throughout with uh, the grill covered in black gloss and a big honda logo right here the grill feels a little flimsy but that can be for the pedestrian norms and uh, similarly here fog lamps are in led but fog lamps are in halogen right here Let's talk about the tire size of the Honda Elevate. Uh it gets 215 55R17s whereas the Skoda Kushak gets 205 55R17s and the alloy wheel design is kind of um better than the Honda Elevate's design and uh, it's this kit is from the VRS uh, so obviously the alloys look very great. Now let's talk about the side mirrors. It doesn't get any 360 parking camera like the Honda uh, Honda Elevate. Honda Elevate doesn't get any 360 parking camera, but it does get the Lane Watch camera. 
let's talk about the boot the boot space of the honda elevate is 458 liters it's segment best class leading boot space and we have a spare wheel right here which is not an alloy toolkit luggage lamp hooks hooks parcel shelf and there we close it similarly skoda has a boot space of about 378 liters but it is still well managed than the korean siblings so yeah the boot space is well managed you can fit three luggages easily there's a hook again there's a light cost cutting by skoda some clever bits by skoda again and let's check out the spare wheel which is not an alloy again both of the cars get cost cutting as this is the 2.0 uh, of the vw group so yes you can see a lot of cost cutting wipers quality is not that great here the quality is okay decent here defogger and high mount stop lamp with washer no uh, spoiler whereas it gets a spoiler high mount stop lamp and defogger shark fin antenna on both the cars roof rails on both the cars but this one seems a little bit functional fuel cap is placed here it gets a fuel capacity of 40, 50 liters whereas the honda elevate has its fuel lid right here and it gets a fuel capacity of 40 liters which is very very less now let's talk about the rear seat space here the driver's uh, the passenger seat edge is adjusted to the maximum position and i don't have much knee room here the under thigh support is actually great uh which we don't get to see in subcompact suvs the dashboard design looks really really good and if we talk about yeah that's a proper third if we talk about we get seat belts right here and there's an armrest with twin cup holders there's three adjustable headrests. The middle passenger finally gets a head. And we also get isofic child seat mounts. We also get ample space for keeping your magazines and clever bits by Skoda to keep your phone. AC vents right there. USB-C charging points, which is really nice. USB-C charging points are needed in this segment. We get a tiny sunroof and we get handle to hold on to handle to hold on to we get led setup for the cabin lights and the buttons are little flimsy and this roof line is also a little flimsy but again it's a skoda so they have done a little bit of the cost cutting for the 2.2 cars now getting in and out of this car is actually decent so you wouldn't have a problem right there now let's talk about the rear seats of the Honda Elevate. Now getting in and out of this car is very easy because the door angle is a little wider. It opens a little wider. Again, we have got Twitters here. Magazine pockets. Uh, there's space to keep your phone right there. Again, I have a lot of knee room. Even if we push the Kushak seat a little forward we have decent amount of knee room the seats were to the maximum behind now if i adjust the driver seats according to me in the honda elevate this ample amount of knee room and i am six foot tall so yeah that's decent amount of knee room foot room is also nice and we have twin ac vents right here USB 12 volt power socket, which is not good because this Kushak offers two USB C's, and we get an armrest here, which apparently doesn't crashes on the seat. We get twin cup holders, LED light, handle to hold on to, handle with soft closure, and a hook. We get two adjustable headrests, no three point seat belt, which we get in the Skoda Kushak. Let's talk about the dashboard design. It looks subtle, clean, 
the Skoda's dashboard design look a little more funky so it might appeal to younger audience but yeah this looks more premium of course the design of the Skoda Kushak I personally like this more than the Honda Elevate from the side but yeah the front of the Honda is more inspiring more gives more confidence to the driver actually because the bonnet is completely flat as you can see here and it gets a little bit of scooping right there soft design but elegant too at the same time because it's a Skoda and similarly if we check the handle out here the handle seam to get chrome uh, this looks more subtle and this doesn't work with the whole silhouette of the car which is weird and let's talk about the tail lights the tail lights are all led here but no halogen uh, no leds for the indicator and the reverse light halogen similarly halogen for the reverse light and the indicator led setup again let's talk about the reflector 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 and four parking sensors three parking sensors right here fake exhaust treatment fake exhaust treatment and that's your towing hook and here there's a glossy black finish on the rear skid plate let's find the exhaust of this vehicle which is hidden right under there big exhaust tip whereas the exhaust tip is hidden hidden right under here the Elevate looks more, more bold in its design and the Skoda looks again more clever, simply clever in its design. Uh, the bonnet is uh, so flat of the Honda Elevate that it gives a more intimidating vibe and it's more flat whereas this is more soft and sleek which is which looks elegant. Uh, I'd rather prefer the this design language but yeah that gives a very macho look so I might prefer that too. I can't decide between both of these cars. Let's get inside and uh, talk about the interior. Maybe that will differentiate some things for us. Now here we get a request sensor right here and we get a request sensor on the passenger side also. Listen to the door opening. It's so heavy, the doors are so heavy. Let's check the door third. It shuts with a proper thud that you would want to close and shut down the door again and again. Let's get inside here. There's a proper handle to hold on to. Leatherite finish, hard plastic right here. Chrome door handles and speaker. Enough bottle uh, holder space so that you can accommodate one liter bottles. Here we don't have ele uh, electronically height adjustable seat uh, or any other function. But that is not a feature which we get in the Honda Elevate as well. Talking about the steering, uh, it's grabby to hold on to and it's very grippy. Two spoke steering wheel. Here we get the German treatment for the headlights, of course. And if I talk about the under thigh support here, it's decent enough. The seats are both stiff and both very cushiony. So they have knocked uh, the ball right out of the park for the seats of the Kushak. And if I talk about the headroom, headroom is okay-ish here I would say uh, no, because the height of this car is less and uh, so if we talk about the rear seats let's get back in the rear seat I showed you earlier how the rear seats have great under thigh support you can see again clearly and the recline angle is good enough you have three adjustable headrest and there's ample lot of knee room and the foot room uh, is decent I think it might not be as good as the Honda Elevate. The headroom is quite lacking here. But again, it can't uh, seat three passengers at one time because there's not much of a hump here. But yeah, the shoulder room is less. And uh, similar is the case in the Honda Elevate. So we can't complain. Both of these cars have similar dimension in the rear seat. But if I see, sit here on long journeys, this seat is very cushiony and stiff as well so I won't get back aches and if I want to get out of the vehicle is it's very really easy because obviously the ground clearance is good there you listen to the door third you want to do that again and again because it's so good it feels like you're in a solid built car right here 
let's talk about the rear seats of the Honda Elevate and the door doesn't feel as heavy as the Skoda Kushards but it is good in build let's talk about the driver touch points right here the ingress in this car is very easy easier than the Skoda Kushark so you're getting in and out of the car is really easy if you have older members in the family that would be really comfortable for them now let's talk about the leatherite finish here tan interiors which looks very good very decent and tan finish right here too handle uh, doesn't get any chrome treatment but yeah there's cost cutting right here as you can see a screw there by honda so twitters here speaker bottle holders now let's talk about the under thigh support which is not good so it's not as good as the skushak's uh, under thigh support and if you talk about the leg uh, the knee room the knee room is decent the foot room is also good and the head room is very very good i'm six foot tall and i can easily sit in here but yeah the, the roof line is scooping a little here so if i sit exactly at this position it might hinder but still the leg room is ample if we talk about the middle seat we get a hump here not as uh, tall hump but uh, again we get that the seats here are the seat here is lifted so the middle passenger would have a problem in sitting and the middle passenger of course doesn't get a head in the honda elevate and uh, yeah it might be difficult for me to go in longer journeys if i talk about the shoulder room so this car can easily accommodate four people but the fifth passenger may have problem in longer duration armrest with twin cup holders here as we can see here so yeah the elevate feels more airy the cabin feels more airy as the height has increased from the kushak but overall both of these cars have good accommodation for the rear seats now let's get in the driver seat and talk about the seats there now first and foremost when i sit into this cabin i get a plush interior leather wrapped steering wheel and here we get chrome treatment and the leather finish runs throughout the dash dashboard which is really subtle if we talk about the driver points again we get leather here and under thigh support uh, is lacking here i would have to say that the seats are very cushiony so they are very very comfortable there's a proper dead pedal right here and if we talk about the dashboard layout hard plastic hard plastic right here and we get a manual handbrake similarly here we get leather finish again in the armrest the leather finish on this car is immaculate the tan interiors are so uh, beautiful and they are inspired by the bmw as the honda tries to copy bmw's design from time to time so here we have the switch gear uh, the switches feel good and they are not as plastic as the korean siblings plasticky feel is not there so they are premium of course and the plastic quality here the plate is uh, prone to scratches so yeah good quality materials need to be used there hard plastics right here hard plastics hard plastics again but uh, again the fit and finish is really nice as you can see the entire dashboard's layout here we get all the switch gear uh, this is illuminated this is illuminated and this driver up and down window function which is auto up and down only for driver not for the passenger so here we get a traction control button headlight leveling button and the engine start stop button is at an odd position here but you will get used to it in no time let's talk about the toggles it get auto headlights and uh, it also get auto high beam assist which the skoda kushak does not have and if we talk about the toggles right here we get rear wipers and front wipers automatic wipers are not uh, a feature in this car we can control the illumination of this instrument cluster we get a manual gearbox right here handbrake no electronic parking brake no chrome tip armrest and uh, with leather finish here we get 12 volt charging socket and twin cup holders a dedicated button to turn on your wireless charger which is indeed a good feature the wireless charger is secured inside so your phone 
doesn't get heated as much usb a charging points we get wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto this is a new touch screen it's a new infotainment system by honda 10.25 inches whereas the skoda has 8.70 inches screen now let's talk about the ac vents they are very plain looking hazard light switch and here we have the automatic climate control for the acs let's get into the reverse gear of this car yeah no guidelines but we get three different angles wide angle normal view and the upper ground view so that we can see whenever we are reversing the car let's talk about the audio quality let's listen to an audio right away the audio quality is decent enough and if we talk about the settings which we get in this infotainment system they are not much you can customize the equalizer here no ambient lighting here uh, which is a miss by the honda elevate and if we talk about the screen it is anti clear screen and we have dedicated buttons right here which is a good touch again dedicated buttons for ac controls so that's what we are missing in skoda kushak and we'll cover that later on if we talk about the instrument cluster we can browse through a lot of settings here we get a part digital part analog instrument cluster and i love the way honda does this instrument clusters so here we get range and fuel and speed and time we also get a g meter which we don't really need but it's a good feature to have if we talk about the speakers we get a eight speaker sound system in this car auto dimming irvm which looks really sleek inspired from cars like bmw and audi this has led cable lamps sunroof let's open the sunroof right away and yeah it's a single pane sunroof it's not a panoramic one but same as the case in the kushak now this sun blind is very flimsy so cost cutting in weird places by honda very very flimsy as you can see i can move it with a single finger here's a light and a mirror similarly here's a light no there's no light there's just a, a space for attaching a light if you want to go after market here we have a mirror here there is some cost cutting screws visible screws which is not expected by honda so uh, that's a let down if you talk about the glove box is decently sized and we can accommodate uh, 1 liter bottles here easily the cubby space is there as well there is no additional space to keep your keys in the car or slot your keys you can do that here but here i think we can keep your wallet and other stuff if we talk about one more thing we get a handle to hold on on the driver side but no adjustable seat belts which is a miss in the honda elevate no adjustable seat belts now let's quickly get in the cabin of the skoda kushak i really like the design of the skoda kushak because it has subtle dark chrome treatment uh so yeah it looks good if we get into the cabin of the skoda kushak first and foremost we get auto dimming irvm here similarly led cable lamps single pane sunroof let's turn on the car the engine start stop button is at a very weird place which seems like an afterthought so we'll turn on the car yeah there it rolls to life now let's talk about the headlight leveler switch here we get that uh auto headlight function again uh, the german affair here we get electronically adjustable and foldable oavms and uh, it goes in like this so we can see we get chrome handles right here if we talk about the sun blind it's not as flimsy as the honda innovate and the roof line might be considered a little flimsy but they have not cost uh, cut cost here so we'll just open the sunroof the opening is decent enough we'll press it once again okay it doesn't go that far okay the closing is not that great we'll just turn it off and we get a handle to hold on to right here the steering feels very grippy to hold on to 
but it's a two spoke steering wheel which looks very 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 elegant and there's knurled finishing on the rollers here which i like a lot because honda elevate doesn't get simple buttons now let's talk about the toggles these are the wiper switches these are sorry these are the headlight switches the high beam switches as well these are the wiper switches and uh, here you can set the cruise control as well and indicators uh, typical german cars the toggles are flipped so here we have the ac controls they don't have they feel a little flimsier than the honda elevates steering we get a proper dead pedal right here as you can see we get automatic torque converter gearbox here we get chrome tip handbrake which is good to hold on to here we get a leatherite armrest and also a 12 volt charging socket right here the engine start stop button should have been placed here or at least here we get good design language a funkier design i definitely like the design of this car as well let's talk about the glove box the glove box is decent size and it's a cooled glove box we don't get that in elevate now the steering is of course adjustable for both reach and rake now i might struggle there yeah there it slots we get paddle shifters right here and if we talk about the cubby spaces here we get space to keep your keys inside here we get bottle holders twin cup holders actually not bottle holders and here's dedicated space for the wireless charger this is a wireless charger hazard light switch we get seat ventilation of course and two way function for the seat ventilation we get automatic ac controls which is honestly not that easy to use while you're driving auto start stop function also there's the skoda branding if you forget which car you're in a, a skoda surround sound system uh, it doesn't get any branded system it's just a skoda uh, system so we get six airbags six airbags in that car also but the safety on this car is a notch above uh, the honda of course let's talk about this 8 inch touchscreen creaky touchscreen but here we get apple carplay android auto wireless again traction control button is not dedicated it's inside the touch screen which is not easy to operate all the time here you are you can see all the vehicle details the screen is slick to use slick enough and uh, if we want to play an audio right away the audio quality is decent uh, we have a place to keep your idols on and if we talk about the seat ventilation i mentioned that we get seat ventilation which you don't get in the honda elevate and a lot of hard plastics in this cabin which is not expected by skoda but here we get a virtual cockpit rpm meter right there and this virtual cockpit looks really nice uh, better than the honda elevate's virtual cockpit because it gets part digital part instrument cluster so yeah that's a good touch here and we can browse through a lot of information uh, average economy and distance okay i'm having some trouble we can select the audio from here tell if bring the phone the seating position of the ride height of this car is not as great as the elevate but yeah it's decent enough you can't uh, see the full bonnet like you can see in the honda elevate this is my seating position and yeah the bonnet is part visible to me but let's see if this car is better in driving and in driving dynamics than the honda elevate almost forgot to show you the rear camera and if we slot it right there the rear camera's quality is not that great and it doesn't get any 360 camera or lane watch camera but the resolution is not that great uh, which skoda needs to improve we are in the cabin of the honda elevate uh, now let's get driving uh, i'll turn off the traction control right there and get into the first gear ac is completely off revving the car rev still 4500 rpm and off we go second gear almost 86 kilometers per hour and yeah there it hits the 100
let's do the brake test as well the brake seems sure footed and uh, yeah the brake seems sure footed so the brake bite was very good but yeah the car is not as fast as the skoda kushak because this is a 1.5 liter iv tech naturally aspirated engine and it is indeed the same engine which has been carried from the honda city and it has dohc motor and so dual overhead camshaft earlier it used to get a single overhead camshaft uh, in the previous generation of the honda city in the fourth generation of the honda city now we get a very flat bonnet suish style so i feel like i am in a car which is above the segment which is in a upper class segment like the ford endeavor or the toyota fortuner so yeah the turning radius of this car is 5.2 meters which is at par with the german twins they also have a turning radius of 4.5.2 meters now if we talk about the steering the steering feels so connected with the car the steering is light to use in lower speeds and it weighs up decently in heavy speed as well and there's good feedback good amount of feedback in the steering and it also takes potholes and bumps easily we'll test that right here yeah the suspension the ride and handling balance is so good on this car the suspension is obviously on the softer side because they have tuned it in that way uh, honda used to be a little stiff with the suspensions earlier but now they have gone softy softy gearbox of this car is very slick to use as well i can get slot into any gear the gearbox throw the throw of this shift is a little long but yeah the clutch is on the lighter side the brakes are well calibrated here we get on to the throttle once again and the low end of this car is very good indeed the mid range is a little a little bit flat but the iv tech motor is just so well tuned variable valve timing and lift electronic control this car is just good to drive here we can see minimal body roll so the body roll is so well contained so well contained that i don't feel like i'm sitting in an suv with a 220 meters ground clearance which is just just another story because 220 meters uh millimeters of ground clearance is a very difficult task to achieve with such minimum minimum body roll so here we'll get yeah that's where the vtec comes in the power band after the 4000 e rpm this engine starts to roar roar and it will put a smile on your face till the 7000 rpm but if we talk about city driving we are going to drive this car in low speeds so the low end of this car is really good uh, which the skoda kushak lacks because there's that 1.03 cylinder engine uh, turbo lag which we seem to feel but the 1.5 liter is just so much better um iv tech uh, 1.5 but if we talk about the 1.5 evo motor of the german twins it's way better calibrated because it has a power output which is beyond in the segment the uh, 1.5 liter iv tech motor has a power band of about 121 bhp and the torque output is 145 newton meters now this engine is obviously naturally aspirated so it doesn't have turbo lag in the mid range uh, in the low end so yeah the mid range would feel a little flat but it's better than all the naturally aspirated engines in this segment we can see there was a steep turn i can take this car anywhere the handling is so good and i love to corner in this car because cornering just gives you a lot of inspiring and uh, like the cornering gives you a lot of confidence if you want to take a sudden overtake put in the second gear and yeah there's the iv tech the braking performance is really good now let's put the car in sixth gear as you can see i slotted the sixth gear right here and will cruise along the car will slowly pick up the pace but the engine won't stutter at all even in the sixth gear at a speed of 25 km per hour 
This is the refinement on offer. This is the level of refinement in the Honda Elevate that we can see in the Honda City 2. Of course, the gear ratios are changed here because the Honda City used to go at a gear ratio of about, hey, there's the lane watch camera. You can see the lane watch camera is so crisp to use, not as crisp as the rear parking camera, but it's very crisp. So here we can see the lane watch camera is so easy to use. This car is easy to maneuver because I can point it anywhere I want to go. And this car has a flat bonnet, SUH bold look. So yeah, it does give you confidence. You feel like you're sitting on a first floor of the car. And obviously this vehicle just has a lot of grunt for a naturally aspirated engine, but it does zero to 100 in about 12.2 seconds. So yeah, the zero to 100 timing, the acceleration is pretty slow. Uh, but again, we can't compete to the turbo engines, uh, which the Germans uh, offer. The sunroof is there to bring you a lot of airy feeling. Yeah, this, this blind is very flimsy, very, very flimsy, flimsy indeed. There's a traffic jam right there. We'll avoid that. Now let's talk about the acceleration on offer. If we put the car on six gear, yeah, there you see, there's an in-gear acceleration noise which is very annoying to me, honestly. It comes uh, between 1000 and 1600 RPM. So 1600 RPM, there you can, uh, till there you can feel that engine noise. But after that, when it comes into the power band, the car is great to drive. The seating position is at a little higher as well because you are seated, the ride height is very good. And if we talk about the wind noise, the cabin noise, yeah, the tire noise, uh, could have been a little less, the insulation could have been good, could have been on par uh, with the earlier standards uh, which the Honda used to offer, but yeah, uh, we have to compromise a little on the wind noise. There's no pillar noise, but the pillar is very thick here, so it might, might cause an obstruction, but right here we can see that the mirror is not attached to the body frame, uh, to the door frame, it's attached to it's not attached to the body frame, of course, what am I even saying? It's attached to the door frame. Here, you can see that the suspension is so soft in this car. And it takes on bumps easily. Here, I can glide to the bumps. Yeah, there you see. No problemo for the Honda Elevate. Of course, this car is not as fast as the Skoda Kushak, as responsive as the Skoda Kushak, but yeah, part throttle input is really great. It's the best naturally aspirated engine in this segment. No doubt about that. The car is easy to maneuver. The turning radius is very low, uh, very uh, less. So there, Honda has given everything in dimensions and this car is very spacious. The cabin is so roomy, so roomy. Or, and of course, in the driving dynamics, the steering, weighs up so beautifully uh, as we go into the higher speed. It's not as good as the Skoda Kushak steering. There the ADAS comes into play. If we talk about the ADAS, so if we talk about the mileage, first of all, we'll talk about the ADAS later on the highway on a big stretch where there are lane markings. So if we talk about the average, uh, I'm getting a 11 kilometer per liter in city driving right here. So this car will give you around 14 to 15 km per liter in city driving and it you can maybe extract uh, in uh, highway and city hybrid driving you can extract 14 to 15 but you will get 12 only in the city if you go onto the highway you might get an average of about yeah the horn sounds really good the horn is obviously changed on this car so yeah the honda honda's um, pre-fitted horn is not that good so the owner changed it. Uh, talking about the mileage again, yeah, on the highway, we will get a figure of about 18 or 19 km per liter. We might be able to extract 20 km per liter because this is the IV tech motor. And here we can see the car is taking bumps so easily. Like this is not a, uh, this is a plain road, but yeah, this minimum body roll and the vertical movement is also not there, which is, there in the Kia Seltos, the high beam is there. We also get auto high beam assist uh, in this car. So yeah, that's a good feature and a safety feature. It obviously get ADAS, which the German twins don't get. Uh, if we talk about the fit and finish of the vehicle, the buttons are good to operate. 
and yes it does feel good in fit touch finish as all the honda city uh, all all the honda uh, city and honda ways also feel good in fit and finish now the city first gear will go up take you up to the speed of 58 km per hour but this will take you up only to a speed of about 51 km per hour so they have changed the gear ratios and uh, i don't know why they did that it maybe did that because this car is 160 kilos heavier so yeah that makes a huge difference so if we talk about if we talk about the gear ratios again second gear goes up to 87 km per hour uh, 87 km per hour yeah and the you you would hit the second gear with a speed of 100 km per hour in the honda city but that's not the case here they have changed the gear ratios it's not as enthusiastic as the honda city but if you're buying an suv and you want that fun to drive factor in this car you will get that of course you will get that fun to drive factor in the skoda kushak also but you will obviously experience that turbo lag this car is just so good in terms of driving dynamics than the kia seltos or the hyundai creta or the aster but yeah it is not at par with the german twins because obviously german engineering is on another level so we would feel that we would rev the motor once again can't get enough of this the iv tech motor has a dual character sick it's so silent it's so refined but as soon as you hit the throttle as soon as you go above that mid range and get into the top end the top end of this car is fabulous and the low end obviously is better than the skoda kushak 1 liter engine because there is that turbo lag i've said that a couple of times and the engine trim as well but it performs really good in the mid range and you need that mid range mid range acceleration in city driving as well but if we talk about speed bumps let's see how this car reacts on a speed bump at a speed of 33 km yeah this car suspension is tuned so well but the suspension is on a softer side uh, whereas the skoda kushak suspension is on a stiffer side there's that in gear acceleration noise again which doesn't seem which we see we it is a four cylinder unit but it feels like i'm driving a three cylinder when i give a part throttle input from 1000 rpm to 1500 rpm there's that in gear noise maybe the car needs to run a good 1000 km and after that uh, or maybe uh, after that the noise will go away uh, but that's the that's the noise it feels like i'm driving a diesel when then it's super refined again and if we talk about how this car maneuvers it's easy to maneuver there's a patch of bad roads this car will glide i mean glide over the bumps so easily and obviously this being a four cylinder unit would be a more reliable unit to buy but the skoda kushak's 1 liter unit is also a very reliable car the brakes are sure footed so yeah brakes inspire more confidence as you go and the high speed stability is also good but after 160 i think the speed is locked at 160 of this car it will just check the wipers out here the wipers has a good amount of spray there is only 3 point nozzle on the wipers so yeah we'll take this car on a little bit of off roading right here as you can see the ground clearance just helps this this car with so much stuff it would have been amazing if we would have a all wheel drive variant in this car but never mind uh, we don't get that we are happy with the 1.5 liter iv tech engine which is a naturally aspirated and it doesn't need any turbo it doesn't have asthma it doesn't it's pure grunt pure power pure air so yeah this engine feels very good to drive we'll get on in the skoda kushak and see if that car is better to drive with a smaller engine or not and if there's replacement for displacement with the 1 liter skoda kushak we'll get on with that drive see you guys in the kushak now here we are in the skoda kushak and uh, the interior of this car feels so plush it feels the steering wheel is a two spoke unit so it feels really good 
turning off the traction control uh, it doesn't get a dedicated button for traction control there it's off and the ac is off as well and the hazard light switch is on uh, we'll just turn it off and uh, let's get on in the sports mode and left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor rev still 2100 on rpm and off we go okay the car the car takes around 11 or 12 around 12 seconds to reach from 0 to 100 and uh, yes there's a lot of grunt in this motor as you can see on part throttle response this is a one liter three cylinder motor and yes it has decent power to offer even though it's being a small capacity engine so yes there might be replacement for displacement which this engine proves that to be because this engine is a three cylinder unit and it gives a power output of about 114 bhp and 178 newton meters of torque which is just phenomenal look at the turning radius of this car so easy to maneuver its streets uh, because it being a smaller car a little smaller in dimension than the elevate it's easy to maneuver and the ride height is not as good as the elevate but yes we can increase that with the height adjustable seat auto naming mirror is good and uh, the visibility on this car is also good easy to maneuver in the city it doesn't have a butch stance the brakes made some noise right there but yeah we'll get on the throttle right again you see the mid-range is so good in this car the mid-range is so good that you would want to press the throttle again and again again and again the mid-range just so good that the there's only a turbo lag in the starting uh, which you might feel in the low end of this car the top end actually is okay-ish but not as great as the elevates iv tech roar uh, the turning radius is very good in this car as you can see right here if we get talking about the steering wheel the steering is so light at lower speed it's so easy to maneuver better than the elevate steering i would say because this is a 20 and elevate is a 19 this steering the horn is meek not as great uh the horn is not uh, good in both of these cars but yeah this steering inspires so co much confidence the steering feel and feedback is so accurate that you would feel connected to the car at all times the steering it is what makes the driving dynamics of the uh, German twins and uh, we have the toggles of the indicator in the left side but you will get used to that in no time compared to the elevate yes it does have a stiff suspension and uh, the suspension is actually really stiff we get on to the throttle again it offers a good high speed stability so yeah the high speed stability on this car is really good the braking performance is so crisp the braking performance is really good because this car gets only two discs similarly the elevate they only get two discs but the braking performance of this car is again very nice i think we'll have to take reverse from here because this is a dead end but the car steering is so light and it would weigh up decently well at high speed the high speed stability is just on another level this car scored five stars in the global NCAP safety rating and yes the body shell is stable unlike the hyundai varna uh, the news just came out that hyundai varna scored five stars in the global land cap today itself but i think we all have to say that the car's build is just on another level even the honda can't match its build and yes this car feels very good to drive it's a fun to drive vehicle even with a one liter engine it extracts so much power that the 0 to 100 timings are actually similar to the elevates timings and yes if you want a car for fun to drive factor and if you want to go for 1.5 liter engine of this car you can get the ambition variant and if you want one liter variant with the features if you don't want to compromise on the features you can get with the one uh, liter variant which would be sim similar priced with the honda elevate and we can see there's a bump right there wipers 
we'll just test the wipers good amount of spray see it takes bad rolls easily as you can see here the high speed stability is so good the ride and handling of this car is just on another level because this car rides so good it rides so good even the suspension being stiff you can take on these potholes and bumps easily the elevate comparatively comparatively has a softer suspension setup but you won't feel that this car needs a softer suspension because obviously it has a great handling stability there's the steering centers to the accurate position and the steering has the proper feel and feedback the right amount of feedback the seats are very firm and cushiony at the same time that's what i would like to say about the seats the comfort is good in this car and we get on on this yeah the speed bump the suspension is well calibrated if we talk about the pillar noise or the wind noise this car doesn't have that because there's no pillar noise but yeah there is that three cylinder engine thrum uh, because again it's not a naturally aspirated engine so you will feel that three cylinder thrum as well and you will feel that turbo lag in the low end of this car if i get into the sport mode and we are in the third gear yeah there's a little delay in power delivery because the yeah then it hits the mid range punch is just on another level the horn is actually not so good it gets automatic headlights and yeah there you see it takes it takes a little bit of time the steering maneuverability is so good here we are taking the car on bad patch of roads and yes it is the suspension is stiff you might feel a little bit of the bumps in city driving but it's well calibrated again the suspension is good the ride and handling the balance is good and the power to weight ratio is also good now this car power specs is, are on paper better than the elevate and in real life also better than the elevate because the amount of torque this small capacity engine has is just on another level this car is just better to drive than the honda elevate because honestly it's more of a fun to drive vehicle the honda elevate is positioned between fun to drive and between comfort because it tries to offer you both the comfort is unmatched in the honda elevate it's better than the skoda kushak definitely and it has a higher ground clearance so that is there too but if you want a front to drive car with part throttle input and this fabulous mid range phenomenal performance you should get the skoda kushak and if you want that unmatched safety because the honda elevate has not been tested yet and the safety is still in question of that car that might get a four stars rating but we are not so sure yet so this has been the review of the skoda kushak 1 liter with the honda elevates 1.5 liter i think both of these cars perform really well in both of their segments the segment is the same but like in both of their dimension and what all they offer the packaging is just good is so good see i took on a bump very easily right there and there's the now if i want a smoother driving in this car i'm in the 6th gear and yeah it won't let me go to the 6 gear i've driven the manual variant also and the clutch is very light in that and the gear shifts are very good on par with the honda elevate now we'll get on with the verdict of this car and tell you if you should buy the honda elevate or the skoda kushak with unmatched performance we talk about the verdict of both of these cars we have driven the skoda kushak 1 liter and we have driven the honda Uh, elevate uh, iv tech 1.5 liters engine i would like to say that this car is definitely the more fun to drive vehicle than this car but it has more fun to drive and comfort as well because this car gets 50% of that fun to drive feel and 50% of the comfort basically this car is just so better at ride and handling because the suspension is stiff the suspension is soft soft air but this car handles a little bit better than the elevate and the german engineering would put a smile on your face but the ivtech motor would put also a smile on your face with the low end grunt and 
the top end of this car the mid range is pretty dead but the mid range is so much powerful right here this car's performance is just on another level so if you want a car and if you have a budget of 70 lakhs and if you want a top model of elevate you can go for this and if you want it for city driving but if you also want a fun to drive element in your car with proper steering response and dynamics the german dynamics and you can get this car for about 70 lakhs at 50 uh, 50000 ek sure uh, on road in delhi if you go for the 1 liter variant if you also want more performance this has a 1.5 liter which is just better it doesn't have that three cylinder thrum so you can go for that uh, variant as well which is the 1.5 liter ambition variant i would like to say that this car might be my choice after driving the elevate we'll see you in another vlog till then subscribe to the channel and do like this video